Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what is ionisation energy, factors influencing ionisation energy, trends in ionisation energies across a period and down a group, successive ionisation energies, an exam style question and finally a summary. So let's begin by looking at what exactly is ionisation energy. Ionisation energy is a measure of the energy required to completely remove an electron from an atom of an element and we form an ion. Let's have a look at the first ionisation energy. The first ionisation energy is the energy required to remove one electron from each atom in one mole of the gaseous element to form one mole of gaseous one plus ions. And this is the equation we use to represent it here. You can see we have one mole of the gaseous element and we're forming one mole of gaseous one plus ions, removing one mole of electrons. I've visually represented this here. You can see we have our atom with three electrons. We're removing an electron from that atom to form a one plus ion. So if we look at the first ionisation energy, we can have more than one ionisation energy. In the case of the second ionisation energy, we're removing one more electron from our one plus ion, this time to form a two plus ion. So now we've had a look at the ionisation energy, let's go ahead and have a look at factors that influence the ionisation energy. Well, we know that in our atom, the negative electrons are attracted to the tiny, positively charged nucleus. And it's this attraction that keeps the electrons held in their shells. When an ion is formed, energy is supplied to remove an electron. The electrons in the outermost shells are lost first. Now, this is because they experience the smallest amount of nuclear attraction. And they therefore require the smallest ionisation energy. The smallest amount of energy is required to remove these outermost electrons. Now, the ionisation energy itself is largely influenced by the atomic radius. The atomic radius itself is largely influenced by two other factors, the nuclear charge and the level of electron shielding. So let's take a look at the factors influencing ionisation energy, starting by looking closely at atomic radii. The atomic radius is the distance from the centre of the atom to the edge of the electron cloud. Now, the boundary of our electron cloud is not incredibly well defined. Instead, what we do is we take a value for the distance between the two nuclei and we halve it. So here you can see I've drawn two atoms with their electron clouds. We find a value for the distance between these two nuclei as shown and we halve it to give us a value for the atomic radius. Now, atomic radii do indeed show periodicity. Across a period, we'll see the atomic radius decreases and down a group, the radius increases. Here we have a periodic table showing the atomic radii of the elements and we can see those trends. We can see across the period the radius is decreasing and down the period the radius is increasing. So let's take a closer look at those trends. Across a period the number of protons in the nucleus increases. Here we have two elements, lithium and carbon. Lithium has three protons and three neutrons. Carbon has six protons and six neutrons. Carbon has more protons, and as the number of protons increases, the effective nuclear charge also increases, and the nucleus becomes more positive. So the nucleus of carbon is going to be more positive than the nucleus of lithium. Down a group, the number of shells increases. Inner shells of electrons repel the outer shells of electrons. And the greater number of shells, the greater the repulsion of the outermost shells. Now, electrons are negative and they'll tend to repel each other. So this repulsion is what we call shielding. As we move across a period, the elements increase in both the number of protons and the number of electrons. Now, as more electrons are added to the shell, there is indeed an increased repulsion. But this is largely offset by the increase in effective nuclear charge and resulting attractive forces, as we mentioned above. So what does this mean for our ionisation energy? Well, the larger the atomic radius, the further away the outer electrons are held from the nucleus. And the further away the outer electrons are held, the smaller the nuclear attraction for the outer electrons will be. Here you can see we have lithium and potassium. Potassium has a much larger atomic radius than lithium. And as a result, the outer electrons feel a much smaller attraction towards the nucleus than those in lithium. And that is why lithium has a much higher first ionisation energy. The first ionisation energy of lithium is 570 kilojoules per mole, whereas that of potassium is smaller at only 418.8 kilojoules per mole. 
So now we've looked at some of the factors influencing ionization energy, let's just take a moment to summarize this. First factor is the atomic radius. The larger the atomic radius, the further away the outer electrons are held from the nucleus, and the further away the outer electrons are held, the smaller the nuclear attraction for the outer electrons will be. A smaller nuclear attraction requires less energy to remove the outer electrons, allowing for a smaller first ionization energy. The nuclear charge also impacts the first ionization energy. The greater the nuclear charge, the greater the attractive force on the outer electrons. Now we can see that lithium has three protons and three neutrons in its nucleus and carbon six protons and six neutrons. And for that reason, the nucleus of carbon will be more positive. The degree of electron shielding also has an impact on the ionization energy. Electrons are negative and will tend to repel each other. And inner shells of electrons repel the outer shells of electrons. This is called shielding. The greater the degree of shielding, the weaker the attraction for the outermost electrons, and therefore the greater the atomic radii, which we know has an impact on the ionisation energy. So looking at the trends that we see in ionisation energy, we see that the ionisation energy shows periodicity. Across a period, there's a general increase in the first ionisation energy, and down a group, we observe a general decrease in the first ionisation energy. So let's take a look, first of all, at the trends that we see across a period. As I mentioned, across a period we observe an increase in the first ionisation energy. This graph here shows us the first ionisation energy of the element across period 2, and you can see a general increase. The same general pattern is observed in period 3. We observe this pattern because the number of protons in the nucleus is increasing as we move across a period. The number of electrons in the outer shell also increases, meaning the outer shell is drawn inwards. However, the level of shielding does not change. There are the same number of shells. As a result, across a period, the atomic radius decreases and more energy is required to remove the outermost electrons, allowing for a general increase in the first ionization energy. Looking at the trend that we observe down a group, we observe a decrease in the first ionization energy. This graph shows us the first ionization energies down group one, and we can see that general decrease. We see a decrease because the number of shells increases. Down a group, the atomic radius increases and the level of shielding increases. Now, although the number of protons does increase, this is outweighed by the increase in the atomic radius and the level of electron shielding, requiring less and less energy to remove the outermost electrons as we move down the group. Now I've looked at the trends that we see in ionisation energy across a period and down a group, let's take a look at successive ionisation energies. We can look at the successive ionisation energies of an element and we see certain trends. Those trends are that we see some steady increases and some sudden increases. So if we go ahead and have a look at an atom of sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons, as I've shown here. Now we can look at the ionisation energies of sodium and I've drawn out all 11 here. So let's take a closer look at the patterns that we see within the successive ionisation energies. From the first to the second, we see a large jump. The first electron is much easier to remove. It sits alone in the outermost shell, as you can see here. The second electron, however, is being removed from a full outer shell. So if we look then at the second to ninth ionisation energies. As you can see, we're removing the second electron from a full outer shell. That explains why there's a jump. From then on, all electrons are being removed from the same quantum shell. In the case of sodium, that's the second quantum shell. So that's why we see a steady increase. We're not removing any electrons from a new full shell. However, as we move to the 10th ionization energy, we again see a jump. The 10th electron is being removed from a full quantum shell. The 10th electron sits in the innermost quantum shell and therefore requires more energy to be removed. So let's go ahead and take a look at some exam style questions together. 1a. Explain the meaning of the term first ionisation energy. Well, definitions like these are important for you to know, and you should be able to immediately know that the first ionisation energy is the energy required to move one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms of an element, giving one mole of one plus cations. We'll receive one mark for saying that it's the energy required to remove one mole of electrons, one for saying that we remove this from one mole of gaseous atoms, and our third and final mark for saying that we form one mole of one plus cations. Moving on to part B. 
The first and second ionisation energies of magnesium are shown below. The first is given as 737.7 kilojoules per mole, and the second as 1450.7 kilojoules per mole. We're asked to explain why the second ionisation energy of magnesium is greater than the first. This is quite simple. It's because the electron is being removed from a positive species. So more energy is required. If we think about it, the first ionisation energy can be represented by this equation, and the second by this. You can see in the second ionisation energy, we're removing an electron from a positive species, requiring more energy. Writing these equations out may help you, but it's the explanation in words that they were looking for here, for that one mark. Moving on to part C. Below are the first ionisation energies of sodium and magnesium, where the first ionisation energy of sodium is given as 495.8 kilojoules per mole, and that of magnesium as 737.7 kilojoules per mole. Explain why the ionisation energy of magnesium is higher than that of sodium. Now, we know this is because the nuclear charge of magnesium is greater. Although the shielding is similar, there'll be more of an electrostatic attraction in magnesium for the outermost electron than in sodium. So more energy is required to remove the outermost electron and the first ionisation energy is higher. I've explained that the nuclear charge of magnesium is greater, although shielding is similar. There's a greater electrostatic attraction for the outermost electron in magnesium, so more energy is required to remove it. That's our first ionisation energy. One mark comes from explaining that the nuclear charge of magnesium is greater than that of sodium. The second for saying that shielding is similar in magnesium and sodium. The third for explaining that there's a greater electrostatic attraction in magnesium for the outermost electron, which is why more energy is required to remove it. Moving on to part B. The trends that we observe in the first ionisation energies provide us with evidence of electrons existing in shells. Describe the trend that we see in the first ionisation energy down a group. Quite simply, down the group we see that it decreases. In part two, we're asked to explain this in terms of electron shells. While down the group, as well as the nuclear charge increasing, there's an increase in the number of shells, increasing shielding. The shielding takes a greater effect and is responsible for the decrease in the first ionisation energy down the group. As a result of this increased shielding, it's easier to remove the outermost electron. So I've explained that down the group, although nuclear charge increases, shielding also increases as the number of shells increases. It's the shielding that has a greater effect on the first ionisation energy. And as a result, the first ionisation energy decreases down the group. This whole question is worth four marks. One mark is awarded for correctly identifying the trend. The second is given for saying that down the group, nuclear charge increases. The third for explaining that shielding also increases due to the number of shells increasing. And the final mark for explaining that it's shielding that has a greater effect on the first ionisation energy. Moving on to question two. We're given a graph of the successive ionisation energies of an element in period three. We're told it doesn't include the two highest ionisation energies. We can take a look at the graph that we've been given, and immediately we can see that between the fourth and fifth ionisation energy, there's a big jump. That's some useful information. We're asked which element the value is taken from. Now, this big jump between four and five is what we can use to identify the element. If we take a look at our periodic table, if we then take a look at period three, the jump between four and five is indicative of an electron being removed from an innermost shell, suggesting that there are four electrons in the outermost shell of our element, and therefore it will be in group four. So we're looking for an element in period three in group four, which would be silicon. And that indeed is the correct answer. We're asked then to explain the general increase in ionisation energy. And this is because we're removing an electron from an increasingly positive species, and this requires more energy, getting us our one mark. Finally, we're asked to explain the large jump between ionisation energies four and five. As I mentioned before, that large jump is indicative of moving to an innermost shell. Ionisation energy five is showing the removal of an electron from a more innermost shell that's held closer to the nucleus. That's why more energy is required. 
we could further enhance our answer by suggesting which subshell the electrons are removed from. This really illustrates our point that the large jump is due to the removal of an electron from a shell held closer to the nucleus. Our first mark is awarded for explaining that 5 shows the removal of an electron from an inner shell, and the second for explaining that more energy is required to do this. We could alternatively explain that 4 is from 3s and 5 from 2p, a more innermost shell. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.